Hello fellow simmers, it's Samuel Beeman of BLS here and today we're going to return to Train Sim World 2 Spirit of Steam. I know that I did, you know, a previous review on this. Well, I've done two previous reviews on this. In fact, part two was going to be my final review on Spirit of Steam, but I've decided not to. Um, because I never showed off the refueling. So I, I, I never actually got to see the the water crane in action on one of the locos. So I wanted to, to re just review this part of the Spirit of Steam. So look at this as like a bonus review of the Spirit of Steam DLC. If you haven't seen the previous parts, uh, I'll link both the videos in the description of the video so you can look at part one, which is the first look, and part two, my overall thoughts of the DLC. But yeah, so let's get into this and just take a look at the refueling and then I've just got a few other bits and pieces to, to sort of clear up about it and then that should be it really <laughs> so this will definitely be the last video of this DLC I mean last review I mean it might it might appear in videos later on who knows but it's the last review video of this DLC Refueling introduction. Welcome to Speak Sightings. In this training module, we will learn how to refill the tender with water before coupling up to a set of freight wagons. Firstly, we'll need to prepare the locomotive to receive water. Walk over to the water crane where you will need to move the water hose over the rear of the locomotive's tender. It's a bit of a lag there, wasn't it? But there we are. Okay, so we've got our woman there. So obviously, yeah, the firebox is still doing the, the nice bug that we we hate. So, we've got to climb down. Wait, surely we're supposed to like undo the top of the tender first before moving the arm okay well off we go then now the hose is in position climb up the tender and open the water hatch insert the hose into the tender tank once the water hatch is open okay well that's not exactly in a position is it look it's a bit mm, off but there we are okay Oh, I mean, this is quite cool, isn't it? How you can sort of pick up the hose like this, stick it in there. The hose is in, and the tender tank is ready to be filled. Turn on the water and start filling the tender tank. We'll do exactly that. Hopefully when you take this out, the water will actually all like fly out like it does in real life, and that would be cool. Let's hope it does that. Okay, let's take, turn the hose off. There we go. And let's take the hose out of the tender. Now now hopefully water should fly out. That's just what we want to see. Well, yeah. oh, okay. Ah oh, no water flying out. That just sucks. That's a shame. And it just hang on the the pipe just went through the tender there. Did you see that, guys? Okay, I can't turn it back now, but the pipe went through the tender. Oh, yeah, because that's very realistic. Now we need to fill the tender with coal. Oh, okay. This should be interesting. Yeah. 
Is it, is it loading, Carl? Oh, okay, yeah, it is. I can see the. I can sort of see the black stuff going in there. Look. Doesn't look, doesn't look very realistic, mine, does it? Very uh, pixelated, speckly. It's very tiny bits of coal. It should be a bit more chunky than that. The locomotive is ready to go, but the points in front need switching. These points are manually controlled, so we'll have to leave the locomotive and walk to the points. Or we can just go over to them using the 8 button and pull them. Okay, no, it actually legit wants you to get out. Okay. You know. Pull the junction lever to switch the direction of the points. The locomotive is now ready to move. Climb aboard the locomotive and drive it to the stop marker. Oh, let me just look at that. I think we can we we can get a lot of screenshot of this here because I mean that that does look fantastic, doesn't it? Let's just centre it down. There we go. That can be like our thumbnail or something. Let's jump aboard. I just added coal bags there. I don't know what's going on with that window there. It's a bit unusual. So apparently according to DTG, I'm speeding a little bit there, I do apologise for that. Okay, so apparently, according to DTG, we they have patched this up. Uh, they've, they've patched this DLC, they've, they've released a patch. I, I don't know what for. Um, I haven't actually read it, but apparently they have. If any of you guys know what that patch is, then please let me know in the comments, because I haven't actually read that. I should, probably, should have probably read it prior to this video, but I didn't, because I've actually forgotten. So yeah, apologies. But yeah, they've released some sort of patch for this. Um, so whether it's fixed any of the bugs, I'm not sure. We'll just obviously have to find out. But obviously, as you know, this, this DLC wasn't perfect, it does have its faults, and there was a few bugs um, during day one's release. Ah, oh, that'll do. The point into the siding have been set for us. So you reverse into the siding and stop in front of the wagons. Okay, so I'm going to go in reverse now.
Nice to see there's a bit of AI going on, isn't it? Couple to the wagons, climb down from the locomotive and walk to the rear of the tender. Part a couple of wagons now, so I need to um, make sure that we couple them up. Some nice buffer action there, they actually work properly, that's good. They've got they, they've They've done the boundaries well because that's something that that is a bit of an issue with some TSW DLC is is where they set the boundaries for the coupling. Right, sometimes the buffers go inside each other and stuff. It's it's good to see that they've actually done this properly this time. Oh no, it won't let us crawl under. That's, that's annoying. Just have to do it over the top. The wagons are now coupled and the service is ready to start. Climb back aboard the locomotive and drive to the yard exit to finish this training module. Okay, so we take to the yard exit. Tell me we've got wheel slip on. Mind you, it's quite a hefty train, isn't it? But now let's have a look. Okay, it's relatively long, fair enough. But again, shouldn't be wheel slipping on 20% reg. Definitely not. Stop in just over a hundred yards. Jubilee passing us. Joking! What a pain in the ass! Oh, it wouldn't stop. So freaking annoying. Well, there you go, folks. I just failed the training module. How embarrassing! Well, we'll just uh, we'll just pretend that never happened, and, um, and and we'll just you know have a look and see what's changed on the Spirit Steam. 
in the means of the update let's see okay so let's go and explore quickly there's something that i did notice because I'm, I'm just going to sort of look through the bugs and see if they've um they've fixed anything so obviously we know that the firebox glitch still hasn't been repaired as we've just seen in that um that training module so that's something they haven't fixed yet so let's go on the jubilee and we'll go from Lupal lime street to edge hill because i just want to i just want to show something off here um Liverpool Lime Street's chest. Okay, let's have a look. So, when this was released on day one, there was a there was a fault with the Mark One coaches, which I never actually um, mentioned in part one and part two of the of the review. So, what we'll do is we'll go and have a look and see if it still has that problem. Okay, so we've got to go to the back of our set and have a look. Oh wait, I need to uncouple this first. Okay. There we are, we see, you see, we still haven't fixed this problem. So we've got two tail lamps on the rear of the coaching stock. So this just says automatic tail lamp on or automatic. And you can't like remove these. Or if you wanted to go and plonk tail lights on a particular service, for example. Okay, so let's say um, these carriages over here. Okay. You stick a towel lamp on it permanently puts two of them on there it would be nice if you could put one there or one there uh, two either side is it's it's a bit of a problem but that's not very realistic is it I, th I believe royal trains had two either side but not normal service trains usually they'll just have the one so yeah um that's that's a bit strange I don't not really too keen on that. Oh, we've got a, uh, a another jubilee coming in there. Look, cut into stock. Four five six two three. I'm not even going to pronounce that name, but yeah. Um. Anyway, so. We have the okay, so we have the firebox problem, which you've all seen. We have the tail lamps doing this problem, which we're seeing. Um, we also have brake problems, which we've seen, and the way it drives is debatable. Like the wheel slips at twenty percent reg, which is rather irritating. But these are the things I haven't shown you. Um, what happens to this wheel set? I don't understand this. Oh, look, the rods have stopped. Now it's just sliding along the ground. So the animation of the rods at a certain distance just goes away. So if you're like looking at the at, at the rods of the steam loco, you know the the um, the running gear as they call it, um, it goes for a little while. But as it reaches a certain distance, it completely stops and just carries on going. And make, and, and from a distance, it looks like it's sliding along the floor, which is <laughs> TS Classic doesn't do that. So why is this doing it? You know the the, the supposed most realistic train simulator is doing that but here is the absolute pinnacle of the bugs so guys thank you for watching this video of my reviews of Spirit Steam. I hope you've enjoyed them. Uh, as I say, if you want to know my thoughts and opinions on the DLC, head over to part two of the review of the Spirit Steam. And yeah, and just have a look for all the parts. But as I've said, um, yeah, there's aspects I'm not really keen on. There's a lot of bugs, a lot of problems here and there. But yeah, anyway, thank you for watching, guys. This has been Samuel Beeman of BLS. 
comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye for now.